We are now back in my Model X. Oh yes, and uh, this time I have a fresh 12 volt battery, so we don't have to run into that uh, those difficulties anymore. But I want to measure the capacity of this car, right? Okay, so right now it's done 191,000 kilometers, and at 116,000 kilometers, uh, the battery was replaced. Okay, let me show you some numbers here on the car, right? There you see the odometer, 191,000. Um, so the battery was replaced at 116,000 kilometers uh, due to, uh, I guess, a battery pack problem. But anyway, so it has done 75,000 kilometers since then. But you have to look at something else here. Because here you see, well, it's almost from the start of time. Uh, you see that uh, the consumption has been somewhat high, 323. So far, because I've been pulling trailer a lot. Um, so uh, this one, I mean, most people won't average this high consumption over time. They will average about uh, well, in a factor of 1.5 times less. So that's why I take the 75,000, multiply by 1.5, and then it equals to 112,000. So that's what most other people would drive, you know, the same number of cycles. Um, and, okay, so we are charging now. We are at 366 kilometers. And if you see here, if we go, no, not that one, this one, energy, okay. You see that it's at 100%, and then the car is char still charging at two kilowatt. So it's doing some kind of balancing now to push it all the way to the max. Um, and I believe, you know, last time I tried to test this, it stopped at 372 kilometers. Uh, I think that value was a bit uncalibrated because it, it like it, the BMS didn't knew that, didn't know that it had less energy in the bottom. So that's why I ran out uh, unexpectedly. So 366, okay. Um, we'll see then. So you know, the way I measure the degradation now is that I charge the car to 100% until it stops, and then I drive it down to zero, almost zero. And then based on the numbers, you know, what the car reports as number of kilowatt hours available, uh, I use that number to compare with earlier results to see how many kilowatt hours I have received, like, pull out of the car uh, back then versus now. And then you just calculate how, how great the degradation is. And uh, now, uh, I didn't invent this way of doing it. You know, someone, uh, someone told me this is the way to do it and was like, well, that makes sense. So just like I didn't invent camper mode, you know? So don't try to argue with me, all right? It's pointless. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But um, um, there are other ways to also measure the degradation. Some people, they look at the number of kilometers and then you see the number of kilometers now and the number of kilometers after six months. But the problem is that there is some hidden buffer there. There's some numbers that they don't show you. And also uh, the, the, the the constant for um, uh, calculating the, that number might change over the update, so that's why you can't trust it. And there's also another way to do it, is you can look into the canvas, into the, the OBD port, and see what the, the BMS reports, right? So if you do this in a new car, it might, in my car, it might say 82 kilowatt hours. And then after six months, it might say 78 kilowatt hours. And then you have some loss there, but um, that one, I believe that one doesn't take into account all the variables because an old battery will have higher internal resistance as it ages. Um, and then the BMS will just tell you based on what it knows, you know, it will estimate how many kilowatt hours uh, it should be able to pull out. But what matters in the end is how many kilowatt hours you can actually pull out of it after all the losses. So even though my test is like, it takes very long time, you have to charge it to full and then discharge it, it will give a much better, you know, a much better real world number than some estimated number in the BMS. So some of you guys might not agree, some of you guys might think I'm wasting my time, but I love driving and I also like testing this, I want to know. And in the end, what matters is of course how many kilowatt hours you can get out of the ba this battery, not how many kilowatt hours the the BMS tells you or the display tells you yeah so let's just wait a little bit more until the charging stops and then we can go 
All right, it finally stopped after almost two hours and it stopped at 368 kilometers. So based on these numbers, uh, I can estimate that I will get 77.3 kilowatt hours out of it. But we will see if we actually get that much by driving. All right, so uh, I temporarily switch off the heater so we don't drain any power while we parked. So uh, again, use range mode, use heater as normal reset the trip and then off we go we have been driving for one hour we just passed espa and um, yeah we have some numbers we consume uh, 20 kilowatt hours and uh, consumption is so high 233 this car is thirsty uh, but we also gained some elevation on the way here so three degrees celsius yes everything looking normal uh, there's some some road construction or some maintenance at night, uh, yeah. But yes, um, dry road, somewhat cold, and also today I live stream, yeah. I live stream and I have glimpse running, so um, in case something happens, then people can, uh, they know where to find me. <laughs> now I'm not counting on anything to happen. Yeah, I'm just gonna drive it close to zero, and then uh, we'll see. Oh yes, we are now at the 50% mark and guess what you see there 38.5 kilowatt hours So so far it seems like we can get only 77 kilowatt hours out of it uh, We don't know for sure we have to drive it down to zero, but before I started uh, The estimation told me I would get 77 point was again 77.3 But now it seems to be only 77 so um you see, we have to drive it all the way to zero and see how how much we really get out of it. Yeah, yeah, so let's do that. Uh, it will take about two more hours. Oh, shit. We have been driving for two hours and 45 minutes-ish. And uh, a little bit back and forth. And now we're heading back to Oslo. 78 kilometers to Oslo and we have 109 kilometers of typical, but we consume slightly more than typical uh, About 8% more. So that means Yeah, we'll be like low-ish, but I don't feel like running it too low. So it will be a good enough um, Estimation towards the end anyway. Yeah, so uh, all right, let's uh, do the final run then to Oslo All right, we are getting close to Klöfta. We have 49 kilometers of range left Hopefully I don't run out of juice this time <laughs> 49 kilometers left and 25 kilometers to go, but we have some downhill Before we get there. So uh, yeah, let's see. <laughs> we will see that we'll see yes. hmm. Okay, live stream is still going on but not too many people today because uh, it's a weekday. It's a Thursday. So uh, Yeah Mostly on weekends we get more viewers on. Yes, we are back at McDonald's. Well, we are in McDonald's close enough, but uh, look here. Okay, so we have consumed 73.2 kilowatt hours and we have 19 kilometers left. The 19 here is four kilowatt hours. So that means 77.2 kilowatt hours. And that is close to the, to the initial estimation of um, 77.3. Hmm, not too bad. Yeah, so at least the, uh, we saw the, the, the number in the beginning and then we did the practical test and both of them show the same result. And from these numbers we can estimate that uh, we have 6% degradation uh, at, uh, at 35,000 kilometers I had 3% uh, degradation. So, um, okay, 6% I lost. I lost some uh, some kilowatt hours here. Uh, yeah. All right, but anyway, um, so six percent degradation after one hundred ten thousand kilometers. That's probably more than some of you guys get. Uh, and I think I have an explanation why. Because I pull a trailer a lot, and uh, you know, I get the impression by looking at some uh, some when I use that. Uh, what's it gonna call? Um, well, based on the fan speed, and also when I turn on the, um, uh, on the, what is it called again? Max battery power. Uh, what is it? Is it? Okay, now it's off now, yeah. 
Uh, but when the max battery power is on, I can see like how much time is left for it to be ready. So that means that usually when it's ready, it's like it's like 50 degrees Celsius, right? Um, you've seen it on the on the P100D Ludicrous video, and uh, I've seen times when I pull the trailer and I go uphill, and for fun I switch on that max battery power, right? And then it just says ready right away. So I'm like, damn! It means that the battery temperature is 50 degrees Celsius when it's going like, let's say when I climb the mountain up to Hemsedal or whatever, and then on the way down the temperature will drop. Yeah, so higher temperature and also of course when I when I supercharge I also have high temperature and you know so basically the way I drive my car with the trailer uh, should result in higher degradation because uh, of course you start the trip with a cold battery but then already at the first supercharger temperature goes up and then it stays up uh, and then maybe it drops a little bit uh, to the next supercharger and it goes up but then it depends again on the terrain so if I climb the mountain the temperature goes up and then so overall like during a like a weekend trip where, where I travel around and I haul stuff you know I pull the trailer supercharge a lot then the temperature on the battery is probably uh, let's say between uh, between 30 and 50 degrees for several hours yeah and then of course when I camp for the night uh, then it drops but then the next day again it goes up so I heard that the Tesla battery can withstand the heat somewhat well like um, if you tap into the, the car's BMS you can read some numbers and it says somewhere there that the active cooling will start at 51 degrees Celsius that is kind of high you know like um, but yeah so uh, the car will not actively cool down until it reaches a certain threshold But again, this depends on many different factors when when you supercharge it will also start cooling even before it, it reaches 51 degrees Celsius um, But you know uh, in a leaf for instance if you reach 51 degrees Celsius then you have pretty crappy charging speed like Like less than half of what it should be but in a Tesla it seems like it will still you know, supercharge at good speed at 40, 50 degrees Celsius. So yeah, I mean, eventually, yes, I should get this app. Was going, it's called a Tesla. There was this one, one of the app, but um, I had to find um, an adapter, an OBD adapter thing. Uh, before you had to like make your own adapter. It looks a little flimsy. So yeah, but maybe you can buy one from eBay now. So I'll do that. Yes, I'll tap into the the BMS and everything and read more info. And by the way, this is a new jacket. Yeah, it's a storm bag jacket. Uh, the old one is getting washed for the first time, I guess. So this is a new one. I bought two of these. Uh, I like them because um, they're nice and soft and warm, and uh, they're actually made from recycled materials. Yeah, good stuff, good stuff. So I think that'll be it. This kind of short and boring video. Almost nobody watches videos like this. But if something goes wrong with my car, then they'll watch it yeah so this video will get less than 10,000 views but i guess mostly like the true followers people who are in looking into the technical details they will watch this video so thank you guys for watching and i hope you will support me on patreon it helps a lot so i think that's it for now next time i'll measure this will be maybe in like six months yeah so yes talk to you guys later